This is the next video in our series for the old house remodeling project we're working on, where I'm trying to provide you with a variety of different ways to remodel an older home. And of course, some of the problems you could run into, like this one here, where we have a sagging ceiling. And I've seen plenty of homes that have two by four joists. And even if they're full dimensional lumber where they are two inches by four inches tall instead of three and a half inches and an inch and a half wide, it's not going to be uncommon to find them sagging and sagging a lot. And I'm not going to go into all the detail or reasons why the ceiling is going to be sagging. However, most of the time it's going to have something to do with overspanned joists. The joists are the wrong size, they're too small. Or it's going to have something to do with additional weight that was placed on top of those ceiling joists. For example, when you store too much stuff in the attic. So let's go ahead and start with my first suggestion, and that would be to install larger joist. And this can usually be done by removing one at a time and replacing it. Because the last thing you want to do is remove all of the joist and then have your building fall down. So one at a time if you can. And for the span here we have a little over 13 feet. And if we use two by six and space them 12 inches on center, then we're going to be okay. Otherwise, we're going to need to go to two by eight, 16 inches on center. And of course, there's a good chance yours is going to be different. You're going to need to find the ceiling joist span charts on the internet. They're all over the place, and they're also in the building code books. And don't forget to check out some of the engineered products like the iJoist or Trust Joist. That might work better for you also. And you might want to mid-span block all of the ceiling joists instead of using a strong back. And I would also like to point out that this is probably going to be my preferred method for this type of repair because trying to lift the joist up that are already deformed and sagging isn't usually going to provide you with a flat ceiling. My second choice on the list will be to install a full length beam and you might need to check with a structural engineer to figure out what the size of this beam is going to be and how that beam will be supported with a post and are you going to need an additional footing and if so will you need a footing at the other end also and you might be able to reuse the ceiling joist because you've just cut the span of the ceiling in half which might allow you to save a few dollars along with using pressure blocks instead of hangers. And these are simply going to be blocks that will be fastened to the beam and then you will toe nail the joist to attach the joist to the beam along with a view of the post. And again, the footing would go underneath this post if additional support is going to be required. So this would be my preferred method number two. And I'm not even going to add this one to my list because I've never seen a detail for this from a structural engineer. And I'm not about to suggest that you can't do this because I've seen it done before on a couple of projects I inspected. And on one of those projects, it was for a friend of mine and they wanted an opinion. And I don't think they really liked what I had to say, but what I suggested was to simply inspect the area regularly. And one of those inspections would be to make sure that the ceiling isn't sagging or cracking. However, if it was starting to crack, then you might need to address the issue then. And as a way to attach the joist to the beam, you might be able to use a longer hanger. And of course, something like this would just need a hanger on one side. And if you do something like this, I don't think you would need to install mid-span blocks. However, if you are not going to cut into the ceiling, you don't want to mess up the drywall, then something like this might work a little better. And this is actually what I came across. They use some type of framing connectors to pull everything up so that they didn't end up ruining the drywall ceiling. Now keep in mind that this beam is just a little over 20 foot long. And the repair that I'm referring to Use two LVLs 
And then, of course, they lapped them and nailed them together, which was something I really didn't like to see. And I'm not about to suggest that this is going to work any better. But if I was going to do something like this, I would definitely bolt it together. And for those of you wondering why they would do something like this, that's because it's going to be a little difficult to get a 20 foot long beam into most attics on a smaller home. And I've even seen projects like this before where they've used three or four 2x12s, LVLs, paralams, and either nailed them or bolted them together. And again, I'm not real happy with this type of a repair. However, I'm not about to suggest that it won't work. And for most of you who watch my channel regularly, I'm always talking about getting an engineer, engineering on this, engineering on that. I'm not 100% convinced, even though an engineer might not use this, that it might not do the job that you're trying to get it to do. And last on the list, I need to point out that if you're dealing with deformed lumber, and this would be lumber that is sagging, that when you do pull it up in the center, that all you might be doing is straightening out the center of the ceiling. However, you could still end up with a sagging point going from the wall to the beam and then again from the beam to the other wall. And I kind of drew it in here to give you an idea of what it might look like if you can see it. If not, let's go ahead and take a look at a joist I pulled out. So the original joist might have one long sag in it. And then when you pull it up in the center, you might end up with another sag going from point to point and from point to point. So you might take some of the sag out of the ceiling. However, you won't end up with a flat ceiling unless you go back to my original preferred sagging ceiling joist repair, and that's going to be to replace the deformed lumber. However, I am going to leave that choice up to you because that's about all I have to say on this subject at this point in time. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer your questions as soon as possible. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you learned something new today or just simply enjoyed watching the video.